video game modding is the hottest thing. A lot of people don and opos, d realize that you can mod PC games to make them do things the developers didn't and opos, d intend them to do. Some of you may be familiar with the term as it applies to customizing a computer chassis to make it look different, like a Borg ship, for example, or creating mod chips for, hacking, game consoles but this hub is specifically about modding video games for the PC. Mods like Dear Esther, No More Room in Hell, and Nerim demonstrate what is possible for a dedicated team of modders. In a worst case scenario, a modder has to reverse engineer the game code in a decompiler or disassembler to make any sort of alteration to a game. This sort of modification is usually a violation of the EULA and is generally illegal, so Don and Apos, T try it at home, but there are many forms of modding that are legal and even encouraged by publishers. It and Apos, s something of a standing joke in the mod community that the first mod that any game gets is a nude patch. Reskinned objects are a very common kind of mod, though depending on the community you and Apos, re in, it might be called a texture replacer or retex instead. Texture replacers can make any in-game object look different, though it will still behave the same way, characters, buildings, guns, creatures, and landscapes are all frequently retextured by modders. These can sometimes be problematic depending on the game because many games treat this information differently but many games do support this type of mod. These kinds of mods are referred to simply as an opos, new skins and oplus. More ambitious and tech-savvy modders may go the extra step and create entirely new models for a game, or modify the original models in some way. This requires the modder to extract the models, and usually the textures as well, and edit them in a 3D modeling package like 3D Studio Max, Maya, or Blender. 3D modeling packages are difficult to master, so there tend not to be as many model replacers or custom models as textures, though there are quite a few of these as well. Getting completely original models into a game can sometimes be difficult due to import limitations on file types, you may need to own the same modeling package that the developers use to create custom models for it. Animation is a notoriously difficult skill to master, large game developers use motion capture technology to create animations for human actors and are experimenting with motion capture for facial animation as well, but is essential for creating certain types of mods. If you want your characters to be able to use some fancy new combat moves, or you want to create a completely custom creature, you and Apos, re going to need some animation. Animators suffer from the same import limitations that modelers face, but are even more likely to run into technical barriers. Getting custom animations working in-game is generally one of the hardest tasks facing a modder. In general, it is not much more difficult to swap out music files or sound effect files than textures. Custom music packs are a fairly popular type of mod, though they usually end up us, borrow and up us, music from somewhere else. Completely custom musical scores are generally quite rare but are a real treat if you can find a good one. Voice replacers are relatively rare for a couple of reasons, for one, they sometimes face import limitations not encountered when swapping out sound or music files, and two, it is really hard to find good voice talent. Another very popular type of mod is the Anapos, God Mode and Apos, mod, where the modder makes the player and Apos, s character more or less invincible. Realism or simulation mods are very popular, such as an Apos, one hit kill and Apos, type mods that make weapon damage very realistic, or and Apos, survival and Apos, mods that force the player to eat, drink, and sleep to improve immersion. Mods that change player or enemy stats, or the stats associated with weapons and health kits require either a level editor with access to these values, many editors supply this, or access to the source code or a portion of the source code. Depending on the game, therefore, these mods can be very easy to make or very difficult. In Oblivion, changing the amount of damage that a weapon does is about the easiest type of mod you can make, just open the editor, find the right object, change the value, and save. In Half-Life 2, making changes like this require at a minimum downloading and installing compilers and SDKs and editing and recompiling source code, in other words, a minimum of programming knowledge. AI stands for Artificial Intelligence and it is one of the most difficult challenges facing game developers. AI modders try to fix things like Andapos, Psychic and Apos, enemies, who always seem to know where the player is even when they have no way of knowing, unintentional and Apos, 
zombies and opos, who stand around and do nothing even when being attacked, and opos, blind and opos, bots, who can and opos, define their way around level geometry and get stuck running on the spot, etc. Because it is so hard to do well, many modders attempt to improve the AI in a game through various sorts of scripting hacks. AI overhauls are generally more difficult to create than game rebalancers and can easily become one of the most difficult types of mods to create successfully. After AI, probably the next most difficult type of mod to make is a custom shader. Creating custom shaders requires an understanding of shader programming so they tend to be less common than other types of mods, though almost every major game has at least one person working on custom shaders. Many games come with level or world editors that allow you to create new levels using the assets that come bundled with the game. These generally involve one or more custom levels plus new characters, possibly voice dialogue, and a longer, more involved storyline with stages that have to be completed. Total conversions are generally only completed by experienced mod teams and are similar in scale and scope to the original game. True total conversions generally require completely custom music, art, and storylines along with a lot of new scripted gameplay features. As amazing as all of these mods can be, nothing is more amazing than the dedication and ingenuity that modders bring to the creation of custom mod tools and unofficial game patches. Programmers write import and export scripts for custom assets, mod loaders and managers, model and texture viewers, and a host of other tools to assist the modder in his endeavors. Many of these are highly sophisticated pieces of software in their own right and are frequently used to fix bugs in the original game that the developers are no longer able or willing to fix. Crashes, poor performance, and graphical glitches are all frequent targets for talented programmers. Some bugs may be fixed in the form of a mod, buggy quests may have their scripts fixed, poorly designed or optimized models or textures may be replaced, and missing content may be restored. These types of mods are typically a communal effort and an opos must have an opos, mods for serious mod users. Most games that support modding have their own online modding communities, usually centered around one or more forums, a download depository, and a central wiki. To find these communities, just google the name of your game and add an opos, modding and opos, and an opos, download and opos, and opos, forum and opos, or and opos, wiki and opos, and see what comes up. You might have to dig a few pages depending on the game, but you and Apos, LL likely find something of interest. You might also be able to find it through the in Apos, community in Apos, link at the game and Apos, S official website. If there are mods for a game, you can pretty much bet that at least some of them are here. Most games have their own mod distribution sites as well, however, so it pays to look around.